In this lecture, you'll learn about RAID, which allows you to group disks together in your server or storage system to provide performance and redundancy. So RAID stands for either redundant array of inexpensive disks or redundant array of independent disks depending on the literature that you're reading. They're both correct. Multiple physical disks are combined into a single logical unit when you use RAID. And that provides options for redundancy, improved performance, or both as compared to when you're using a single disk. And there's different types of RAID, different RAID levels. The different RAID levels provide different levels of redundancy or performance. And I'll talk about the different RAID levels as we go through this lecture. RAID can be managed in software by the operating system. For example, if you've got a Windows server, you can configure RAID in the Windows operating system. It can take care of it for you or it can be done in hardware using a RAID controller, which is probably going to give you better performance. Okay, so our different RAID levels. First one to cover is RAID 0, which is also known as a striped set. With RAID 0, the data is split evenly across all the disks in the set. That provides better performance, but you don't get any redundancy. If any disk in the set fails, all the data is lost. This is actually less reliable. It gives you less resiliency even if you're using a single disk. Because if you've got two disks or more, then it's more likely that one of them is going to fail. But it does give you better performance. So let's see how the performance is going to be improved. First off, we'll look at when we're just using one disk. And I'm going to write some data here. Let's say I'm going to write the name of my hometown, which is Aberdeen. So we write A, B, E, R, D, E, E, N. So you can see the time it took to write Aberdeen on that single disk there. If we compare that when we're using RAID 0. Now in our example, we've just got two disks in this RAID 0 set, but you could have more than two disks. And we're going to write the same data, which is Aberdeen again. And because I've got two disks, I can write to them at the same time. So I write AB at the same time across the two disks, then ER, DE, EN. And you can see that it, because I had double the amount of disks, it took half the time to write the data. Now it's not really going to be exactly half the time because we do have some overhead with this, but you get the general idea. And if we had three, four, five, etc. disks, we're going to get even better performance here. This is a good time to break off for a second and tell you about drive types, speeds, and sizes when you're using RAID. So you can mix different drive types, different RPM speeds on the drives when it's HDDs, and different sizes in the same storage system, but don't put them in the same RAID group. So for example, if you've got some SSD drives and some SATA drives on the same storage system, that's fine, but they have to be in different RAID groups. If they're different disk types, the system won't even let you put them in the same RAID group, but if they're a different size or a different speed, typically it will but that is a bad idea. You can see from the example here that we've got two drives in our RAID 0 RAID group. One of them's a 500 gig drive, the other one's a one terabyte drive. And because you're always striping across them at the same time, it means that the system has to treat them both as 500 gigabyte drives. So you've lost half the capacity of your one terabyte drive. So when you're using RAID, you want to use the same drive types, speeds, and sizes. Don't try to use different types there, or you're going to lose performance, or you're going to lose capacity. Okay, the next RAID level we have is RAID 1. So RAID 0 was a stripe set. RAID 1 is a mirrored set. With RAID 1, a copy of the data is written to both disks in the set. This provides redundancy because you've got two copies of the data. So if one disk fails, you've still got a working copy left. Write performance is not improved as a copy of the same data is written to both disks. 
that read performance is improved as reads can be serviced by either disk. So RAID 1 basically gives you the opposite effect of RAID 0. With RAID 0, we got better performance, but we didn't get the redundancy. With RAID 1, we get the redundancy, B, but not so much in the way of performance. Next RAID level is RAID 4. That uses block level striping with a dedicated parity disk. So this is gonna give us both performance and redundancy. Data can be recreated from parity if any one of the disks in the set fails. Read performance is improved as multiple disks can currently service reads. Write performance is not improved with RAID 4 as all parity data is written to the same single disk. So let's look at a simplified version of how RAID striping works with parity. So here we're striping seven and five across the disks and then one and four and then three and three and then nine and five. So with RAID 4, we're going to add an additional disk to the set that's just going to be used for redundancy. This is our parity drive. So we don't actually get use of the size of this drive it doesn't add to the capacity that we can use it's just used for redundancy but it gives redundancy in case any of the drives in the set fails the way it works was we'd written seven and five so we add those two together to give us 12 we write 12 to the parity drive then we add one and four together and we write five to the parity drive three and three we write six and then nine and five and we get 14. So a simplified version of how RAID works. Then let's say that the first drive in the set fails. Well, when that happens, we can still read data from the set because 12 minus five is seven. It must've been a seven that was in the first part of that disk. And then five minus four, it must've been a one there and so on. The performance is gonna be degraded until the failed drive is replaced and rebuilt. But while we do have a failed drive there, we've still got a working copy of the data. So when we do replace it, we put a new disk in and from parity, it knows it must've been a seven, a one, a three and a nine. So it can rebuild the same data on that disk. We can do that automatically from RAID without having to recover from a separate backup. So that was when the first drive failed. If the second drive fails, again, we can recreate the values that were there because 12 minus seven, it must've been five, five minus one, it must've been four and so on. And obviously if the parity drive fails, we've got the data there, we can put a new disk in to replace that and we can rebuild the parity again. Okay, so that was RAID 4. Next one is RAID 5, which is quite similar. RAID 5 uses block level striping, but with distributed parity. Data can be recreated from parity if any one of the disks in the set fails, the same as with RAID 4. Read performance is improved as multiple disks can currently service reads, the same with RAID 4. Where it's better than RAID 4 is write performance is also improved as parity data is spread throughout the set rather than just being to one disk. So we're writing it to multiple disks there. We're going to get the better performance. So that is RAID 5. Next one is RAID 6. So RAID 4 and 5 give us redundancy if any one disk in the set fails. RAID 6, that uses block level striping with two parity blocks distributed throughout the set. So data can be recreated from parity if two of the disks in the set fail. So with RAID 6, we get more redundancy than we did with RAID 5 and RAID 4. RAID 5 and RAID 4, we can recover from one disk failing. RAID 6, we can still work even if two disks fail. So you might think, well, why would I ever use 5 or 4? Why won't I use always 6 then? Well, that's two drives now that are being used for redundancy that are not being used for capacity. So if those are two one terabyte drives, it's two terabytes worth in your set that can't be used for actually writing new data to because it's just being used for redundancy for the parity information. With RAID 6, very similar to RAID 5, but you've got that extra parity drive. So again, read and write performance is improved. So four and five, 
allows you to recover or to keep working when you have one failure. RAID 6 is for two failures. And there's other RAID levels where, again, you can add additional parity drives as well. So you could have three parity drives, for example. Okay, the last type of types we've got our levels are hybrid RAID. With hybrid RAID, the different RAID levels can be nested into a hybrid set. So some examples of hybrid RAID, in RAID 10, that's RAID 1 plus 0, you've got multiple RAID 1 mirrored sets are nested into a RAID 0 stripe set. So that gives you a good balance of redundancy and performance. With RAID 0 plus 1, that's the other way around, where multiple RAID 0 sets are nested into a RAID 1 mirror. And with RAID 50, that's 5 plus 0, multiple RAID 5 stripe sets with parity are nested into a RAID 0 stripe set. Okay, so that was it. That's RAID. With a server or a storage system, you're not going to just have one disk there. You're going to have multiple disks, but you want them to be able to be used like as one system. So you're going to group them into a RAID set, and that gives you the performance and redundancy you require based on the RAID level that you use. Okay, that's just done for that. See you in the next lecture.